Today's video is a little bit different. It's not really something that I would ordinarily post on my channel. Moving day for basically Regan and I. We have our own place, and I'll show you that soon. Just, you know, more of it. You guys have already seen it before in the past, but we've had our place for several months now. In about a day, we're gonna be getting married, and so then we're finally gonna be able to move fully into our house that we've had for months now, and actually get to use it, use the shop, use the drive, use the space, just use, you know, what we've been paying for, and actually be able to live there, and it's gonna be super awesome. But, uh, so today we're just moving over a lot of stuff, using the blue truck right now, because I had to bring it over to get it washed yesterday, so I'm like, well, I gotta take the truck to wash it, and before I head back to store, I'm just gonna load the bed up with some stuff and get it hauled over. So of course, guys, do not forget, you guys are down to the last seven days, or six days, I can't remember, six or seven days left to enter to win this truck, and then it's over. Just another look here at the wheel clearance. You can see how much room it has. That wasn't, that's not full lock, but I mean, you can see with a decent turn there, it's. Still not even close. It. These wheels and tires don't rub even a little bit, thankfully. I'm sick of wheels and tires that rub. If you come over here, we got the Limited. And of course, this truck, as you guys know, is my 2019. It's got 2,200 miles on it now. My 2,000 mile review, I'm just gonna make it real quick. This thing runs awesome. It's a super nice riding truck, even on these big 35 by 1250 mud train tires. The thing just rides so, so nice. And this one doesn't even have the airbag rear end for the self-leveling for towing or any of that. Uh, but I mean, it, it's just super awesome and just super excited to actually be able to use it here. At some point, I would love to get it a gooseneck so that when we have giveaway winners that, you know, they can't make the trip or they don't have a way to haul it, you know, we can actually just voluntarily haul the truck to them with our own trailer and all that stuff. And that's something that, uh, that I'd love to, or at least get you know hitch put in it so I can rent my dad's trailer off of him because he's got a 25 plus 5 gooseneck. Wouldn't mind being able to use this truck for something like that since it is such a nice truck. I'd love to be able to actually use it for something like that. But something that I'm going to be doing right now is installing this exhaust tip. And um, my 2000 mile review, like I said, truck runs awesome, super nice riding, super high quality um, engineering and craftsmanship on the interior and exterior. And, just the whole truck. I mean, I would definitely recommend buying a truck like this. If uh, you're in the market, I know that there's gonna be some guys who are like, dude, ain't nobody ever needs a truck like that. Well, if you guys that are in the market, you know who you are. You guys do know that sometimes it's necessary to buy a truck like this for, whether it's for tax deductions, write-offs, business, hauling, stuff like that. For that audience that understands, yes, I would definitely recommend the truck. What we're gonna do today is actually install this exhaust tip. No, it's not deleted and tuned yet. Hopefully at some point they make that stuff available for this this truck, but I'm thinking about putting this tip on. It's just a, I think it's a six inch, I think it's a six inch tip. Um, but actually just sliding it on there and putting it on about, about like that, just to have it on there. That's like a little bit of eye candy at the rear end though, because I'm gonna be actually taking this to um, Reagan and I's wedding and I wouldn't mind this truck having this exhaust tip on there, so we're gonna tighten that thing on there, just like that. You know, it doesn't stick out like crazy, it's not one of those massive exhaust tips, but I do have another tip I'll show you. It's from TSO, and that's the tip I'm gonna be putting on this truck once it is deleted and tuned with five inch exhaust. Then I'm gonna be putting my TSO tip on there. Exhaust tip on the dually. If I can get you a little bit better view here those lighting's pretty bright but okay, you can see it it don't really stick out past the plastic there on the side of the truck hardly but and I didn't cut or trim any exhaust tip so as you can see you can see it's right back in there um, but unless you get down on your knees and you're looking up in the tailpipe you don't notice that like I said that's just temporary that's just eye candy because I'm taking it to our wedding it's going to be all polished up and sitting out there with Reagan's truck because the trucks have been such a huge part of our life. The trucks are more than a truck. I mean, this is what brought literally, other than, you know, Lord, I'm saying like this channel and what I've been doing and the truck stuff, like that's what brought me and Reagan together. Our passion that we shared, I mean, through social media and stuff like that, like that's how we crossed paths. And it's a pretty, it's a pretty cool thing to me. So the trucks are gonna be there, of course, and hopefully we get some footage of that and uh, we can share it with you guys on here because it's been an amazing journey. And uh, when you find that person, you just know people out there that, you know, maybe they've seen 
not so good things in relationships or they've experienced bad stuff and hardships themselves, but real, real genuine love is out there, guys. I just wanna let you know that. It will cross your path if you are in search of it and loyally living for that. Truck looks good, got that exhaust tip on there. And let me show you actually the tip that we're gonna be putting on this truck once we get the truck all, you know, worked on and we get a new exhaust new exhaust on it this is actually tso tip and it is huge i set it up here gently so i don't scratch it um, but i got it silver and black and i was going to put this on my longhorn longhorn didn't have a five inch exhaust and i was getting rid of the longhorn by the time i got the tip and so i'm like you know what perfect i'm going to be doing a whole bunch of cool stuff to my limited and then after i get all that stuff done and this can work put this five to eight inch tip on there and it's gonna look really good. Just like the black and the silver is just gonna really tie together on this truck because that's kind of the look that we're going for and the cab lights already kind of match that look and the wheels and grill and all that stuff. So it's gonna look really good and I think you guys are gonna really, really like the look that this tip will have on this truck. We just got Reagan's TSO tip put on. They're, they're a pretty cool company and they're on Instagram. Um, but they make they make some pretty cool stuff. Once we get this on the truck, you better believe we're gonna be tagging them on there and sharing everybody their page and stuff. That's all we're gonna be doing today in terms of this truck. Um, but yeah, looks good, super excited. So we're inside our house here and I'm not gonna show you our entire house rig in that house, um, but I'll show you this one little room and kind of what we've got going on here. So this is pretty much where we've just been like storing stuff, building up to moving in here and we just got like it's basically like this one room that we're just using as like a storage unit it's a smaller room we're gonna actually be putting an office in here but for now we're actually just piling all of our stuff in here so that once we do move in here by like you know a little over a week from now officially in here in here then we can go through all this and sort it out and decide what we want to keep throw out you know stuff like that's so what's for memories what's for keepsakes what's you know necessities and so on and so forth and this is pretty much the most I'm gonna show you of the house just because we like privacy. I get my Malibu out of my shop so that I can get my blue truck parked back in here, which by the way, could be your blue truck. So I gotta ask, do you think I should swap out the Malibu with something more masculine or not? I do like using it to not rack up tons of miles on the trucks, that's what it's good for, but it's not really something I love driving. It's pretty much only used for that type of stuff, just like unnecessary miles that were just like back and forth around town, long distance, stuff like that, like you don't need a truck for, it's not for making the videos or for content or something like that. Pretty much that's what the car's for. Kinda thought about one of the small Duramax diesels, the uh, Canyons or the Colorado I like the, the GMZ Denali Canyons a lot more. I think they're pretty cool. And I was actually talking to a guy that owns one. He said that his gets 42 miles per gallon. It's deleted and tuned. And it's on some street tires and it's four wheel drive and all that. But he's like, gets 42 miles per gallon going down the highway about 70 miles an hour. So that's pretty crazy. And it's still diesel. It's lower cost. I mean, yes, you could buy like a big Durham action or something like that. But that would defeat the purpose of having like a fuel efficient vehicle if you're just going to go and buy a you know a giant diesel truck that gets the same mileage as your other diesel truck so it would still be diesel it'd still be cool but at the same time it would still be that super fuel efficient vehicle so it'd be like a multi-purpose versus this is only for one thing putting miles on i gotta get this thing parked this truck's been running so good so glad i'm actually glad that turbo officially kind of croaked on us because now somebody's going to get a much better truck uh, I would have felt horrible if you know somebody won a truck and I had no idea that a turbo was about to fail on it And then it looks like I'm the bad guy, you know what I mean? But I uh, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to fix it and you know, Nobody else had to deal with that because that's not it's not fun to have to deal with but it is nice that um, It's fixed now Lord, Should be good. We're good to go. This truck's pretty much going to be parked here for the most part until one of you guys come pick it up. Six or seven more days left to enter. Get in while you can, fam. This truck is not one you want to miss out on. It's a beauty. This is actually the shop we're going to be working in now. So those of you who have been watching the channel for a little while, you know that I introduced this shop actually several months ago because when me and Reagan actually got the place, it was a while back. But once we got it, um, it's just perfect. Like if we really wanted to, we could put you know, the Malibu in here, the mower, we could still park it up in the front area. We could have the blue truck in here or and a dually. 
and we can still fit all those vehicles in here just fine. We could fit three trucks in this one shop. It might not look that big in video, but it's a lot more space than you think. We're gonna be getting another project truck soon that's gonna be more like in depth, something that's gonna be around for a little amount of time that we're gonna be able to actually do like a full transformation on because I kind of missed the concept of that. That's what I was looking for before I found the blue truck was another project that I could like fully build myself and really get that style that I really wanted done. And then I found this, I'm like, crap. I'm like, I want to do a full blown project. And I'm like, I am getting married really soon. And I probably should have something that's not quite as intensive of a project. That's just like a show truck ready to go. Just because I didn't have like a lot of time to really goof off with experimenting with what I do and don't like on a truck. That's really the main reason why I went with this truck. Soon, this is going to be the shop you guys see every day. So just think about that in the videos. This is about to be what you see every day and we're gonna be doing a lot of cool, cool stuff in this and just super, super excited. A lot of content on the way. So we're sitting in a room in my dad's barn that's actually soundproof, so it's much better for this audio. In the barn with the tin roof, it is just extremely loud, so we're not gonna be sitting out by a truck. As cool as it would be, it's just way too much, way too much audio out there that's just gonna really drown out the good audio. So let's get into some of these Q&A questions. I'm actually gonna throw some Q&A questions out there and answer them because I've got a point in the video where I figured, you know what, let's answer some questions because I'm sure there's some questions brewing that a lot of people would like to have answers to and maybe they were wondering themselves. So I'm picking out the top three questions and I'm gonna answer them. First one that I thought was a good one. When you first started out doing what you were doing, what was your end goal and looking back, what would you have changed? When I first started out in 2017, my goal, believe it or not, was to try to make $1,000 a month doing YouTube. And I was like, if I could just do $1,000 a month doing YouTube, that would cover the cost of my truck, that would cover the cost of my insurance, and this and that, and that would be like, I would be the happiest person in the world if I could just maintain that goal. Very quickly, that goal was just blown out of the water and I had no idea what I had just got myself into. And then obviously my goals and my dreams and everything just kind of adapted, which they should. You should never just have one thing in mind and be like, if that one thing doesn't happen or once I get to that one thing I give up and I'm done, you should never, ever, ever, ever do that. Now I'm not saying don't be content and don't be grateful. Those are two very different things. Being ungrateful and adapting are two very different things. Adapting and raising the bar and setting higher goals and doing more and doing more is just pushing yourself to be better, to do better, and to create a better version of what you're doing and who you are, which is much different than being just ungrateful, which if you're a very ungrateful person, it doesn't matter how much you have, you're just never gonna be happy anyways, whether it's with what you're doing, how much you're making, stuff like that. Very happy and very content with where I'm at. If things continue to go way better, that's awesome. If they continue to be the how they are, it's still awesome. I'm doing what I love, and so that's awesome. And then if there's anything I would change, the only thing I would change looking back was wishing that I had the mentality of scaling and growing sooner than I did because I didn't even have any kind of real thought process on scaling a business, scaling the brand, scaling the content, stuff like that, which is just, you know, improving, improving, improving. I didn't think about any of that stuff until not that long ago. You know what I mean? I was just like trying to see how many videos I could pump out a month and just see how I could make quantity, not quality. And it was just a very different mindset at the time. It was, it was more like, oh my goodness, if I don't make enough videos, I'm not gonna have enough ad revenue to pay for my truck parts next month to try to make my content. So it was just like, no matter what, I have to make a video every single day. Versus now, I'm, I'm much more refined in that sense. Are my videos better than anybody else's videos out there? No, that's not what I'm saying. There are some very talented artists out there when it comes to the art of making YouTube videos, and they do a really, really good job. In terms of where my content has come from to where it's at now, and how good I was at YouTube until now, that has adapted and gotten better. But those are the things that I would change, and those are the things where my goal was starting out. And now we're giving away a you know, $25,000 built truck every other month. So, I mean, things change, things adapt, and you just gotta keep, keep expanding that vision, expanding that mindset, and going to the next big thing. Another question, kind of related, slightly different variable. What got you started into YouTube? I feel like I could do it, but I couldn't make good content. I was actually already doing YouTube. I was actually filming for my outdoors channel, Brotherhood Outdoors, which is more like hunting and fishing and you know hunting deer habitat and stuff like that. And I loved doing it. That was my passion at the time. And I was like, if I do anything for a career, it's got to be deer management and stuff like that. Am I still gonna you know start big businesses in that field? Absolutely. But at the time. That type of channel was just extremely difficult to grow. And so after about two years of just full time, just going at it every single afternoon, trying to film something, I just got to a point to where I was like, just burn out of like working and working and working and sewing and sewing and not seeing results. But you have to understand, you can't start something and give up quick. 
Like I said, I did that channel for two years and the last year I did it was every single day of getting like 200 views of video tops and I was like, someday I'm gonna make it, someday I'm gonna make it, someday I'm gonna make it. That's what I told myself every day and I'm like, not right now, but someday it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. And I just got to a point where I'm like, okay, it did happen, now my subscribers went up like 12,000 when I stopped posting videos, go figure, and all my videos have gotten tons of views now, but that wasn't until I stopped doing YouTube, so maybe eventually it would have had that breakthrough if I would have kept doing it, but it just was not happening. So I'm like, I gotta find out what's my backup, what's the second thing I love the most that I can do? And I'm like, I like watching truck videos, I'm like, I'm gonna try to do truck videos, so that's pretty much where I started. I just followed my passions in order, tried the first one I love the most, tried my second one, and then once I found out what really just clicked and what I like doing, yes, I'm like, hunting is cool, but it's unpredictable. With trucks, I love it, and I can predict what I'm gonna do next, and I can plan ahead, because I know what the outcome's gonna be. It's not like I have to wait on that deer to come in, wait on my work, and I could go a whole season and not see anything. It's like, I can predict what's gonna happen, when it's gonna happen, and make stuff just fall into place, versus like, with outdoors, it can be kinda tough. So, that's what I did, I just kinda followed my passions down the list, and pursued what I like to do. I have always told people, I said, film what you like doing and create something that you could see yourself sitting down to watch. So I had a guy ask me, he said, how do you do what you do and how do you find any downtime? Because yes, I know there are gonna be trolls in the comments. Oh my gosh, you do YouTube and you don't do anything. Biggest load of crap ever. You don't even, most people would faint if they had to do everything I had to do every week. It is just stress levels like you would not imagine. I mean, phone calls with the IRS about stupid tax stuff. You got calls with the banks and calls with attorneys. You got calls with this, you got email. I mean, more stuff that's involving with a business, like what I'm doing, than most people ever wanna have to deal with. I mean, it's not always easy and it's not always fun. It's worth it if you're okay with having to push through some crap that's not always the funnest. There's always more of a reward for something that's difficult to do that most people aren't doing than it is for something that's easy that anybody can do. So just think about that. You are going to earn and be paid based on the difficulty and time that it takes to do what you do. So if you put in 40 hours a week and you work the same job anybody could do, chances are you're gonna make the same amount of money anybody can go make. For example, if you have to do a trade that takes you know eight years of school, chances are if you're going to school to be a doctor and it takes eight years, you're gonna make more money than people who didn't go to school for the eight years. Don't think at all that I'm telling you have to go to school to make a lot of money. That is not what I'm saying. That is a huge misconception. What I'm telling you is it's the time and the energy that it takes to get to a certain point to finally have that breakthrough to where you can do it. And I also had another guy ask, he said, how do you find downtime to do what you do? Now, for example, Reagan and I are getting married tomorrow. We are going to be going on a honeymoon and we're going to be gone and I'm not going to be doing any filming, any editing, no calls, no nothing, which took a lot of preparation and a lot of man hours to get to this point to actually have that downtime. Time. But we're not going to have to do any of that, and the videos are still going to be posting. Everything is going to be automated going up on its own. Everything is going to be taken care of on the business. It's all automated through our vendors, and it's going to look like nothing happened. Nothing changed. We didn't go anywhere. We were never gone, and we're going to get right back, and you're going to see a video right after this one in a day or two. Like nothing happened. We never went anywhere. But you have to learn how to delegate your time and get into businesses that you can scale without having to literally clock in and clock out, and if you don't clock in, you're not making any money. It's a very tough thing for some people to really figure out what works and what doesn't work for them, but I've kind of found several things that work for me through my brand, my YouTube, my you know affiliate links, through my this, my that, my lawn care business. I mean, all this stuff is gonna be producing income and going on its own, and I'm not even gonna be home. And it takes a lot of time to be able to actually get to that point, but it is well worth it. I would not even doubt in my mind I put in probably close to 90 hours a week and that is just constantly dealing with something or another. You know what I'm saying? Some weeks it's a little slower, maybe 40, 50 hour weeks, but most weeks are probably very, very packed if I had to say so. And of course you have to understand, not everything I do is on YouTube and making these videos. This is a very, I mean this is pennies in the barrel compared to everything else that I do. And another person asked, why did I start the lawn care business? Same reason I started doing YouTube. I wanted something that I can scale, that I can see grow, and that I can take to the next level, which you can do with any business, by the way. Don't think that only certain businesses you can do that. And don't ever think that you have to be the first one to start something 
to get in on something. So for example, lawn care, there are 200 people doing lawn care in Fort Wayne. And so I got to a point where I was wanting to buy a piece of property and I'm like, you know what? I can't buy the property right now just due to some other stupid stuff of the banks. It was just the dumbest excuses ever. But then I'm like, you know, I'm going to take some of this money and I'm going to go buy some brand new lawn care equipment, get a truck, get a trailer, plate it all, insure it all. And then when we're gone, when we're traveling, we're you just, you know, out living life, doing what we want to do. I have another business that the guy shows up, he grabs the equipment, he goes and works every day. And then I'm making money off this lawn care business and I don't even show up. I mean, yeah, I have to fill up the equipment once a week. But other than that, the guy goes out and works and all we have to do is when he gets back, he gives us a list of all the lawns that he did that day. We send out invoices online and everybody who paid cash, he hands us the cash. He gets paid, goes about his way, just like that. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's just a very small scale. We just started that business and it's gonna be growing. But like you gotta, you gotta learn how to scale. You gotta learn how to get the right people that you trust and that you can hire in to slowly take over what you're doing to where you can step out and still make a decent amount of money off of a business but you don't have to be in there laboring it. That's called investing and delegating and putting your money into things to where your money's working for you. Put it into businesses where your money's working for you and you don't literally have to be out there laboring to make those dollars. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know this was kind of an odd Q&A. It wasn't like your normal, like what are you doing to the next truck? Like stuff like that. But I just wanted to answer some questions that I feel like might be very important and a lot of people might actually take away something valuable from it. Smash that thumbs up, leave your comments down below. Do not forget to enter to win the blue 12 valve Cummins compound turbo truck on American Forces. It's a beautiful, beautiful truck. Engine was completely gone through and built at 8,000 miles, and that truck is just in pristine, top condition, just beautiful truck. Every $15 is another automatic entry to win. Information is in the description below. You guys are down to the last week to enter to win that truck. Subscribe if you're new, join the team, join the family, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.